This is Joe Delio from the Palo Alto Networks community team bringing you a Palo Alto Networks video tutorial. In today's video tutorial, I'll be showing you all about the new Threat Vault. The new Threat Vault has been redesigned to allow for better use, search, and display of the data to help everyone find what they need. Inside the new Threat Vault, we have some new features. They've included more source types. We've got a unified search, which I'll show in a second. I will be demonstrating all the different source types and examples of searches, as well as extra features. Now we can go to a browser here and we can actually show you the site is https colon slash slash threatvault.paloaltonetworks.com. Once in there, it will do a single sign on to get you signed into the Threat Vault. And as you can see here, we have the source types listed here, which we now have anti-spyware signatures, antivirus signatures, DNS signatures, PANDB URL classifications, vulnerability protection signatures, as well as wildfire signatures. Examples of, just to show you the fact that we can use everything from MD5 hashes, SHA-1256s, CVE information, CVE numbers, signature IDs or unique Palo Alto signature IDs from the threat logs, or domain names, URLs, or IP addresses and we can pull information from. One of the new features that the Threat Vault includes is a unified search. So for example, let's say you're searching on SSL for an SSL vulnerability or anything along those lines. When the results are shown, you have multiple source types that are listed all at once. For example, anti-spyware signatures, DNS signatures, Scrolling all the way down, you'll have vulnerability protection signatures. All this information is displayed all at the same time. An extra feature that is also here is the ability to clicking on the title of these allows you to minimize them, gets them out of the way if you didn't need them but still wanted to look at the information. You can click back on them to restore the information. One of the aspects of the Threat Vault has, that has been improved is the antivirus search. If we search for CryptoWall as an example here, we can see that anti-spyware as well as antivirus signatures show up. One of the really nice features that we have here is the ability to search as well as display the different hashes for the antivirus signatures. You can display the MD5, SHA-1 or even the SHA-256 results or hashes. You can display the SHA-256 hashes here. You can actually take this information and search on the hash and you'll actually get the actual executable that was uploaded in this example it was for wildfire. We can see wildfire information, file information on a portable executable 32, gives all the hash information, the size, when this was created, uh, and what the wildfire verdict was. You even have a link here to go to the virus total site to get even more information on that file if you'd like. Going back to the crypto wall results here, for anything that is listed, for example, the signature name here is cryptowall.gen, command and control traffic, gives you the unique thread ID, you see the severity, what the first release of the anti-spyware that uh, threats applications and threats that this was included in and if it was updated it actually shows you that also you can click on it have a pop-up and it gives you similar information it gives a description the category what minimum pan os version that is needed to properly detect this and if there is not released or released it'll show you the status if you have multiple results, you can actually step through previous and next here, which is really nice, saves you a lot of time. Seeing the antivirus signatures below, you'll have similar information, the name, the unique threat ID associated with it, what time it was created, if there is a threat ID as far as release information, as well as the first antivirus release that this was included in. Going back to uh, our SSL search, 
Again, we covered the anti-spyware signatures examples there. But we also have DNS signatures, which is uh, a new feature to be able to show even more information. Uh, you know, show the domain information, uh, unique thread ID again, the domain that's associated with it, as well as the type that it will list it as like an antivirus. If there is any specific PanOS information associated with PanOS 7.1, you can see it here. By default, it shows pre-7.1. You can click on post-7.1. If the information is different, it would show up. Otherwise, it's exactly the same there. Continuing down, we'll minimize the DNS signatures. Where it lists vulnerability protection signatures, inside here we list out the signature name, the severity, any CVE number that it's associated with it, and again, first release and latest update for the applications and threats in which this is covered. To get more information, as always, click on the name, and a pop-up will show even more information, giving a short description of it, what category it is, severity, the action. This is a default action. Inside the apps and threats, what will happen when it sees this. You can modify this and change it to whatever action you'd like. Specific vendor ID information. Again, unique thread ID up here at the top and even a reference to get even more information about this. And again, as I said before, you can step through and go next to get a little bit more information if there was multiple results. Now let's take an example here. If you were looking inside of your logs inside of the threat logs we're looking you know, specifically on subtype vulnerability here if there was any specific entry let's say for example this adobe tiff file parsing issue here for this vulnerability clicked on the magnifying glass and you can see in here threat id 33310 if you wanted to get even more information on this we can actually just we can go to the threat vault here and search on the 33310 and this would show the Adobe TIFF file parsing remote code execution. Again, the severity, any CVE numbers it's associated with it when it's covered, get more information clicking on the name, gives a full description of it, even more information. Uh, you can see this reference for Adobe and a link there to give you more information. Here's another really good example. Let's say you have a specific CVE number you want to get more information on to see kind of our coverage on this. Inside the Threat Vault, you can search on it. This one I found was CVE 2016-1013. We can see that we have antivirus signatures, vulnerability protection, as well as wildfire signature information about it, which makes it very nice to be able to get lots of information on how we have coverage for this. One of the signatures I haven't been able to show you yet is a wildfire signature. So we can see here how it gives a specific virus name here, a unique thread ID for it when it was created, information again for the release when it was first released, as well as the hashes. Now again, we have both pre and post 7.1, where we can see post 7.1, the first release is much different. It's the same day, just the release number is different, as well as the hash, different hash information available here. Now going back to the main page here, which by the way, if you ever are searching anywhere and you need to get back to a blank page, you can click on the Palo Alto logo in the upper left hand corner to refresh the display. Now, one of the other things I also didn't get to show you is going to be the PAN database, PANDB search. If you were searching for anything, for example, yahoo.com, it will return information here. If you have any DNS signatures specifically, it'll talk about the name of the domain, what the domain listed is, and again, the type. Scrolling on down is specific PANDB URL classifications for the main domain yahoo.com, internet portals, but because this searches on subdomains also, you'll get everything from this video.media.yql.yahoo.com, 
computer and internet information, etc. Going down the list for web-based email, weather, video, TV, travel, you name it. And it gives you a different breakdown of all of these domains that are branched off of yahoo.com for subdomains. In the past, it was very difficult to correlate different searches, but now with all the new features of the Threat Vault, it helps make your job that much easier. This concludes the end of our video. Please be sure to visit the Threat Vault. Let us know what you think of it. I hope that this video has helped you understand the new Threat Vault. As always, we welcome all feedback, comments, and questions in the comment section below. Please stay secure. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.